The equity market has had a significant uptrend over the past few months, but the cryptocurrency market has so far lagged far behind. In this video, I'll provide you a handful of charts that will help you understand why I think the cryptocurrency market will continue to grow. I firmly feel that a significant bull market is just getting started. I'll explain why I think that is at the end of this video and where I think XRP and other cryptocurrencies are headed. Make sure to watch the entire video to catch that. You won't want to miss it, I promise. But I also want to talk about an appeal in the Ripple SEC case at the beginning of the video. This topic has lately gained a lot of traction on Twitter, and John Deaton has just published an outstanding thread on it. You really need to watch this because he's going to explain why it's not as big of a concern as many people are portraying it to be. So let's get started with the video. And to start off, I simply want to discuss John Deaton's tweet regarding a potential appeal. Now practically everything John Deaton has said in the Ripple SEC case has been accurate. He was among the first to point out that XRP is not a security. Rather, Ripple sales are the issue from the very beginning of this case. And he set out to foretell precisely what Judge Torres would decide and how she would make her decision. He was accurate too. Since the beginning of the litigation, he claimed she has come forward to deny that XRP is a security while also stating that Ripple had both sales and purchases that qualified as securities transactions. And indeed, this is what took place. I find it hilarious that people will listen to all these various lawyers who have gotten a lot of things wrong. And I'm not referring to anyone associated with XRP. Many individuals outside of the XRP community believe that Ripple will lose. As a security, XRP is. But even if they were completely wrong, I find it hilarious that people will still run to listen to those folks. John Deaton has been on the money in this situation from the beginning. Both Fred Raspoli and Jeremy Hogan have been doing an excellent job. And because I believe it's crucial, I just want to demonstrate exactly what John Deaton is saying. The opposite of a setback is an appeal. First of all, the Second Circuit won't deliver a ruling for another two years. The Torres decision will be the rule of law up until that point, at least in the Second Circuit, if it is appealed. Second, the SEC does not necessarily prevail on programmatic sales or sales to exchanges, which constitute programmatic sales even if the Second Circuit rules that Judge Torres applied the third criteria incorrectly, which I anticipate they won't. Torres simply applies the other two factors and might still come to the same conclusion, that the SEC did not fulfill the common enterprise factor, which is, in my judgment, a more challenging component to satisfy than the third factor by doing so. Never undervalue the significance of this victory for XRP, XRP holders, and Ripple. This is extremely wonderful because it's something I didn't know at all. According to John Deaton, even if the SEC filed an appeal, it would only challenge a portion of the Howey test. The SEC is not going to appeal Judge Torres' decision that XRP is not a security, which is the primary reason why this is such a big deal. I have been stating this for the previous few days. I spent a lot of time discussing this in my most recent videos. However, it's crucial to realize that XRP was never the security in this scenario. The SEC made several attempts to smuggle it in. They were silenced by Judge Torres' remark, you know what, I'm going to come out and say that XRP is not the security, even if you didn't ask me to make a decision on this. For owners of XRP, that was the black swan scenario. And that is entirely off the table based on what John Deaton is saying right now. And the reason that is off the table is that, according to John Deaton, when it comes to programmatic sales, they can only challenge the application of the third prong of the Howey test. This means that the SEC can only challenge a single Ripple sale, and they can only challenge one Howey test component. Now that John Deaton has stated in this tweet thread that he does not believe this would be successful, it is clear why this is so crucial. He believes that even if the SEC were to challenge Judge Torres' application of the third prong of the Howey test, the challenge would be rejected by the justices hearing the appeal. The SEC, he continues, got super lucky on the judges, but even so, they got in the Second Circuit and were successful in appealing how Judge Torres applied the third prong of the Howey test. This makes the case even more compelling. Just to be clear, she applied this and claimed that programmatic sales are not securities transactions because of this aspect. Judge Torres could reverse her ruling and apply the other two prongs of the Howey test even if the judge went back and appealed that in the Second Circuit. And according to John Deaton, the Howey test various prongs could just give Ripple and XRP another victory. This is quite significant. It also demonstrates how tenuous the SEC's argument is. Judge Torres only applied one part of the Howey test in his decision, concluding that Ripple's sales of XRP were not securities. She may, however, increase the number of prongs and make it increasingly clearer that XRP is not a security. Although she didn't have to, the SEC faces a serious issue as a result of her decision. 
Judge Torres could just go back and say, okay, you got that factor, but I'm actually going to say because of this other factor that you didn't appeal, even if they were to contest his judgment today. These programmatic sales of XRP by Ripple are still not security transactions. Therefore, the SEC may spend two to three years attempting to implement this appeal. Nothing changed at that time. Ripple is still permitted to sell XRP in the same manner. Still, XRP is not a security. And even if the SEC wins the appeal after all that, they might still lose. Even if John Deaton, and I don't think the SEC will succeed in their appeal, it only goes to illustrate how much of a challenge they face. As long as Judge Torres determined that these programmatic sales still didn't violate securities laws due to a separate aspect of the Howey test, Ripple may still sell to exchanges even if the SEC were to succeed on appeal. In the end, this gives me even more faith that the SEC won't ultimately decide to appeal this ruling. We also need to be aware that it will take them at least a year to actually challenge this ruling, which is another crucial point. Gary Gensler might not even be employed by the SEC in that period. A SEC chair may enter, examine the circumstances, and declare, you know what? The agency is in trouble because of this. We're simply going to reach a settlement with Ripple and end this. Let's see what transpires in any case. If you missed it in my video from yesterday, I discussed Jeremy Hogan's tweet in which he stated that I didn't believe the SEC would actually file an appeal. They may be referring to an appeal in an effort to pressure Ripple into a better settlement, in my opinion. However, I believe that this simply demonstrates that we shouldn't be that frightened even if there is going to be an appeal. The SEC is facing a difficult uphill struggle, and I adore where owners of Ripple and XRP are at the moment. I want to talk about the current state of the market now that I have moved on because many people were unhappy that XRP did not increase in price after the decision. Personally, I genuinely believe that the pump would increase, but I believe that this is far from over people. I believe there is still a great deal of pricing potential over the coming few years. I believe that the market as a whole is currently just little uneasy. Everyone remains a little anxious. People are anticipating how the Ripple SEC lawsuit will end. But the general attitude around all markets worldwide is another factor that is seriously impeding the markets. Since I felt it was truly great and provided a pretty good summary of how I am thinking as well, I want to read you this tweet by Crypto Insight. He claimed that the Nasdaq surpassed its all-time high on December 4, 2020. Twelve days later, Bitcoin smashed through its previous record and rose by another 248% to new records. ETH trailed Bitcoin but surpassed its record high. A high that ETH hit two months later was 238% higher than its previous record high. The price of XRP never again reached an all-time high. The SEC picked out XRP and filed a lawsuit against it on December 19, three days after Bitcoin's breakout to an all-time high, banning it and it alone from taking part in the 2021 bull run. I must admit that the timing of the case is favorable. We won't discuss that, though. According to the calculations above, XRP would have peaked around this time if it had followed ETA's lead. The situation has changed. XRP is now free to move because it is the only asset with regulatory clarity. The Nasdaq is 8% behind its record high. On July 26, when we will learn whether the Fed will decide to cease raising interest rates, the Nasdaq may reach new all-time highs as a result. When XRP is free in this run, what happens? Now I find this to be quite fascinating and I believe he is correct. Additionally, I have been stating this for a while, a few months ago. When I saw the Nasdaq bouncing sharply off its lows, I began to become very bullish on the cryptocurrency sector. We need rallies and a robust equities market for cryptocurrencies to rise in today's environment. Institutional capital makes up a significant portion of the huge money that drives the cryptocurrency market, and they consider this asset class to be risky. Therefore, people say, okay, let's get into riskier investments, and they start pumping the cryptocurrency market when they see the markets performing well and the value of the stocks rising. In the end, the cryptocurrency industry is far more specialized. It's much more infantile now. As a result, even a modest allocation of their cash has the power to ignite these markets. Now what I want to draw attention to is that this is the NASDAQ and we were on the verge of breaking all-time highs. If the Federal Reserve decides to stop raising interest rates, we might be entering an extremely positive catalyst. Having said that, he made a point of stating that the last time we witnessed a significant breakout in Bitcoin was the last time the NASDAQ reached record highs. You can see it if you look at this chart right here. The NASDAQ last reached an all-time high in December 2019 or January 2020. We witnessed a significant market ripoff, but given what we now know, XRP ought to be in a position where it starts outperforming Bitcoin and Ethereum rather than being constrained by the legal dispute. The moment the NASDAQ spikes, when this occurs, 
XRP should at least reach the $12 level and recapture former all-time highs. The question that remains, in my opinion, is how much XRP was kept back during the last bull market and whether it needs to make up for the period that it was held back. Now, I won't speculate on that at this time, but what I find so fascinating is that we observe the same thing. The Nasdaq is surging and poised to reach record highs. This will generate a significant amount of bullish emotion in the markets, which will clearly flow into the leading cryptocurrencies. We also know that XRP recently gained this clarity. And XRP is the primary cryptocurrency that will appeal to institutions due to its functionality. I genuinely believe that the stage is being prepared for a significant run in XRP. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.